Our story begins in the warm pool, a place in the Pacific where the trade winds meet the world's warmest ocean. Here, clouds form as warm air rises. Across the Pacific, clouds gather at three large meeting places. These meeting places have big scientific names. There's the South Pacific Convergence Zone, the Intertropical Convergence Zone, and the West Pacific Monsoon. These cloud meeting places move throughout the year, causing the usual wet seasons and dry seasons. Some years they move to different areas because of changes in trade winds and ocean temperatures. This in turn causes changes to rainfall, sea levels and tropical cyclone risk. Scientists call these changes in the air and ocean El Nino and La Nina. In an El Nino event, trade winds weaken, warmer water moves to the east and the cloud meeting places move closer together. El Nino brings big changes to the temperature, rain and sea level in our region. In some countries such as Papua New Guinea and Palau, it can cause drier weather and lower sea levels, sometimes leading to food and water shortages. During El Nino, tropical cyclone risk increases in the east, in places like the southern Cook Islands and Samoa. And in countries along the equator like Kiribati, El Nino usually brings more rain and sometimes higher sea levels, which can lead to flooding. It can also mean a better time to catch tuna in Kiribati as the fish follow the warmer water into this area. El Nino and its impacts usually last for one year and then things return to normal. But El Nino can last longer. In some years, the opposite of an El Nino occurs. Scientists call this La Nina. In a La Nina event, the trade winds get stronger, pushing warmer water to the west and the cloud meeting places further apart. In some countries close to the equator, such as Tuvalu and Nauru, La Nina can bring less rain and even drought. This can affect locally grown food sources like taro, banana and breadfruit and sometimes lead to water shortages. In other countries like Fiji and the Solomon Islands, La Nina usually brings warmer oceans, more rain and can cause flooding. This can lead to coral bleaching, waterlogged crops and increased risk of diseases like typhoid and dengue fever. In the Solomon Islands, La Nina also causes higher sea levels. El Nino and La Nina are not climate change. They are part of the natural climate system. El Nino and La Nina will continue to happen in the future, but climate change may intensify some of their impacts. Learning how to adapt to the ups and downs of El Nino and La Nina will help to prepare for long-term climate change. Some El Nino and La Nina events are more severe than others. Your local weather office is always watching El Nino and La Nina to provide temperature, rain and cyclone forecasts that your island is likely to receive in the months ahead. It's important to undertake activities to prepare your area for the impacts of El Nino and La Nina events. There are many ways to do this. Be sure to keep up to date with the forecast from your local weather office and take time to make plans for the season ahead.